What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? It is Misha B here, back at it again with another video. Hi y'all, my name is Misha, AKA The Bold Budgeter, and I make content that is based in financial literacy with sprinkles of faith and me trying to get my life together. If this is something that you would be interested in, please subscribe. And if you are an OG, welcome back and thanks for sticking with your girl. So today, we are talking about financial boundaries, specifically financial boundaries with yourself. Now, this is gonna be a series that consists of three different videos. This one, the first one, financial boundaries with yourself, financial boundaries with loved ones, this includes your friends and family, and then last but not least, financial boundaries with your romantic partner. Now, the reason that this is gonna be three different videos is because they all require us to use different strategies in order to be the most successful. So before we jump right in, let's just talk about what are boundaries in general. Now, boundaries are defined as limits um, or parameters that we put around something. I'm gonna go ahead and take it a step further to say it's a limit or parameter that we put in place for our protection. Now, countries do it, right? They have boundaries or borders. Um, we have it with our coworkers, right? Girl, don't call me after hours talking about work. Like, I don't get paid. I don't work for free. Like, or if you don't, maybe you should try that boundary because that's important. We don't do free labor. Or even with your homegirl, like, hey, I didn't like when you did X, Y, and Z in the future, can you not? These are things we utilize to protect our peace, our emotions, our physical, right, well-being. But these are also boundaries that we need to implement in our finances to protect our future goals, our assets, and our financial wellness as a whole. Today, we are focused on financial boundaries with ourselves because sometimes we be out here wilding, like spending money on things that we shouldn't be spending money on. So it's up to us to put on our big girl panties and our big boy boxers in order to establish strong financial habits that consist of boundaries or limits. Oh my God, I got so dark. Or limits that allow us to reach our financial goals and to sustain our financial health and success. So the first thing I want us to do is when we are trying to think about setting financial boundaries is where do we need to have boundaries, right? Like we really need to reflect on areas in which boundaries would be helpful for us in our success. And it just got so dark. I am so sorry. It got really dark, so I had to put on the light on just to explain the lighting situation. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is to set our financial boundaries, is really being reflective and understanding where are our areas where we could benefit from having limits, from having boundaries. What areas have we been having trouble in? We really wanna reflect on what's been harmful to our financial success. So this requires us to look at our spending report. So you might need to pull your bank summaries. You might need to pull your credit card statements. All the things that give you more insight and hard data into your spending habits. Now this is objective, we're not doing this with any judgment, but it just allows us to see the full picture and we need the numbers. We need to know what areas do, what areas would I benefit from having some boundaries. We wanna go through these spending reports and some of us may know this intuitively, right? Where am I spending way too much money that is preventing me from being successful in my goals? Or where am I spending so much money that I'm not proud of how I'm spending my money? I'm not being a good steward of that money. And this would sound like, if I didn't eat out so much this month, I would be able to insert important financial goal. If I didn't eat out this month, I would have been able to invest the $250 that I wanted to invest this month. Those are the areas in which we need to have better boundaries because we're overspending in certain regards and it's preventing us from reaching certain success markers. So what I suggest is you go in and you reflect on where am I spending too much money? Where do I wanna establish better boundaries? And write it down, okay? This is something that I don't want you to do in your head. It's not something that I want you to just have a conversation. You can write it down or you can do an audio recording if that works, but I want this to be memorialized somewhere so that you can really reflect and think on it. Then what I want you to do is to journal on this question. What is causing me to spend so much money in this area? What is it that I'm trying to get at? So for example, if you notice that you're spending a lot of money on brunch and you recognize that you cannot afford to spend this much money on brunch because there are other financial goals that you have, like investing, I want you to sit down and think about what is it that I'm trying to get from this brunch experience? Is it the food? Like, do you really enjoy the food? Or is it, I like spending 
time with my friends in a way where we have a little bit more freedom, where we can like break bread and have conversation. Because then we wanna think about what are the alternatives that we can do to still get that feeling that don't require us to spend as much money. So if it's the food that you really like, can you and your friends set up times where each of you take the responsibility of cooking at home and then like having dinner parties that are a little bit more cost effective and you all split it a certain way. Or if it's the friendship that you're really looking for, maybe it's your friends coming over and y'all having game nights and like ordering pizza or putting in like DiGiorno in the, in the oven, right? Something that just doesn't require you to spend a whole bunch of money on brunches because y'all we know brunches are mad expensive especially if you go with a lot of different people now you got to split the bill evenly for 40 people they're ordering champagne steak lobster this that and the third and all you have was a waffle and now you're spending a hundred dollars for a waffle because you have to split the bill evenly like nobody has time for that and I just went on a rant but like that's truly how I feel it is 2022 like can we come up with a better system. Really have those reflective conversations with yourself, do this in a journaling manner, and really try to get to the heart of it. Also, try to see if you can recognize your triggers. For some people, maybe brunch, for some people, maybe shopping. So if you are someone who notices, like I need to set a boundary around shopping, figure out what your triggers are. Is it an email that you get, a promo email that you get from your favorite company? Like, oh my God, there's a 50% sale. Whenever there's a sale, I feel like I need to go out and purchase something because it's such a good, because it's such a good price. Then maybe you're one of those people that needs to unsubscribe from those email lists because you recognize that this is one of the areas where you need to set boundaries, right? This is a financial boundary. I'm gonna unsubscribe from anything because I'm spending money too sporadically on things that I don't really need. So again, the first step is reflecting on our spending and trying to see what are the areas in which we want to set boundaries because we want to or we need to. And again, we wanna think of it from the place where it sounds like if I didn't spend this much money on X, I would have had enough to do Y. That kind of gives you intuitively where you need to set those financial boundaries. Now, after we look over where we need to set up boundaries, I personally think it's really important to set financial goals and to prioritize those goals. So what does that look like? I want you all to sit down and put goals into different time frame categories. So we're gonna do short term, anywhere from one year to two years, middle-ish term, anywhere from three years to five years, and then long-term, anywhere from five to 10 years. Of course, there are long, long-term goals, which I also want you all to think about, but really write down all of the financial goals that you have within those different time brackets. So that could be things like purchasing a home, paying off your car debt, paying off student loans, buying a new car, going back to school, investing, having enough money for retirement, buying a lake house, um, going on a really great vacation, planning a birthday party. Any type of goal that requires you to put away substantial amount of money, those are the things that we wanna be putting down on this list. And the reason that I want you to prioritize it by time frame is because obviously a goal that you wanna complete in the next year requires a little bit more attention than a goal that you wanna complete in five years. Mainly because with less time, you need to put more money consistently away to reach that goal versus a goal that if you have five years to reach, you can still put that money away consistently, but the sum or the amount of money that you're putting away every month will be less because you have more time. You have a longer time horizon to do such a thing. And some goals will overlap. So let's say you have a goal to retire one day, right? That is a super long-term goal, depending on your age. However, a short-term goal that's related to that would be maxing out my Roth IRA. Both of those goals are overlapping. And it's important to understand that you won't get to a really long-term goal if you're not putting in things in place short-term, right? Little benchmarks um, in order to get you to that long-term goal. So you're not gonna be able to retire at 65 if you've never put away any money in your investments 30 years ago. It doesn't work like that. So it is important for us to write down all of our goals and to really establish a timeline to see what do we need to prioritize most. An issue that a lot of people have is that they're trying to do way too much with their money. And unless you are a high income earner, there's only so much you can put your money towards before you run out of money. 
That is why we always wanna look for ways to increase our income. However, within that, we wanna be super hyper-focused so that we can use our money in a way that allows it to work the best for us. So, once you have it prioritized by time, I want you to go in again and prioritize them by what is the most important for you because you might have multiple goals within the same time period. So for example, let's say between that one year and two year mark, you have like buy a home, go on a vacation in Bali, pay for a wedding. Those are all really expensive things that are all requiring your attention within a short time period. And this may require you to really sit down and think about okay, what is the most important for me right now? And this could look like you switching the timeline. Okay, maybe we'll do, let's get married first. And then after we get married, you know, six months later, we purchase a home and maybe this vacation, instead of it happening this year, we move it to next year. All of these things are just important because it allows us to see where do we need our money to go. Once you set your goals, it allows you to set better boundaries because you know what you are striving for, right? So let's say you're spending $100 a week on brunches, but that's $400 a month that you are spending. If you decide like it's really important for me to save up $15,000 for a wedding, this requires you to now look at your, your numbers and say, okay, instead of spending $400 a month on brunch, I'm gonna spend $100 on brunch because that other $300 needs to go to my wedding. And because you set this goal, it's something that's important to you, you will be able to better establish boundaries and say no easier knowing that you have a big expense that matters to you. Setting goals allows you to prioritize how you're spending your money and it gives you a clear vision of where you need your money to go. Within that, it is so crucial to set a budget. A budget allows you to see where your money needs to go and it gives you an actual number of how much that limit or that boundary is. A budget gives you a detailed plan of how you can meet your financial goals and it allows you to clearly state your boundaries and your limits for certain categories. Let's say you decide you wanna max out your Roth IRA in 12 months, so in one year. It's $6,000, you do the math, you realize you need to put away $500 a month to fully max out your Roth IRA. You need to establish, you need to establish where you're getting this $500 from. So having a budget allows you to look at all of your numbers and to say, okay, this is where my money needs to go. If you are spending $400 on brunch and you're recognizing that you don't have enough money to put into your Roth IRA. Like let's say you're like, okay, I have $250 to do this comfortable, to do this comfortably. Now get, now you can look at this budget and say, okay, I need to cut out or limit, set a boundary around how much I'm spending on brunch every month. Because that extra $250 can be coming from this money that I'm spending on brunch. So now instead of spending $400 on brunch, I'm going to spend $150 and that other $250 is now gonna to go towards me reaching this financial goal. And I want you to write it down, right? Like if I limit going out to eat to twice a month, then I will be able to save for a new car, right? Like I really want us to be that specific because that's gonna be our mantra when you want to dismiss that boundary, right? Like, okay, if I only spend $50 a month on eating out, I'll be able to save for my car in a year, right? Like that is the mantra. We wanna establish a mantra that really allows us to be successful and to affirm ourselves. I'll be able to pay off debt if I cook at home and only go out once a month, right? Those things are super important. And to make my life easier, right? I'm gonna automate this. So now I'm going to have my bank automatically take the $500 out of my bank account every month for this goal and that automatically limits how much I have to spend on brunch. I only have $150. And I take it even further that for those of us who you know have credit cards and we have trouble saying no, take that money out in cash. If you know spending money on a certain thing is, is really hard for you to say no to, use cash. That way you cannot spend more than you have. Right, like that is a strict boundary. I'm only gonna use cash when going to brunch. I'm only gonna use cash when buying clothes. I'm only gonna use cash because cash um, 
there's a limit to how much cash you have. Whereas when you have your credit card or you're using plastic, you can spend up to your limit, which could be thousands of dollars that you don't have and that could be a problem area. So that is something also important to note that when you're setting financial boundaries, you can set boundaries around which medium you are using to pay for certain things that you have issues saying no with. Because when the cash is out, the cash is out. Now this is easier said than done, so this does require you again to always come back to where are your priorities, where are your goals. I am very big on, again, writing down our goals. Everything here that we're doing, we're writing them down. And what are your priorities? Coming back to this ever so often to keep you strong and grounded and why you are saying no to things. And I also want to point out this doesn't have to be forever, right? Like saying no to brunch or saying no to buying new clothes or new shoes or whatever your area is this is not forever this is just for the time being for you to build better habits or for you to gain more income i also want to say that your financial boundaries can change the specifics of those limits can change one season it might be i can only spend 20 dollars on eating out the next season I can spend a hundred. It's really dependent on where you are with your finances and what your financial goals are, as well as what are your habits. If you have icky habits, then okay, you might need to you might need to use these boundaries for longer than someone who has better habits but they're really focused on a very specific goal. But I just wanna put this out there that things can change and that's okay. Additionally, I want us to continually reflect every month on how we're doing with these boundaries and saying no. It is super important for you to check in with yourself and to know what's working and what's not, what are you having trouble in and what do you need to get better at. Also, when creating your budget, think about the areas in which you spend your money on and again, we need to be very specific with how much we are going to spend. So how much are you going to spend for things like birthdays? How much are you going to spend on things like Christmas? How much are you going to spend on different holidays like Father's Day, Mother's Day, etc.? Giving. These are specific amounts that you need to set before that type of occasion comes along, right? Like if you decide that you are going to only spend $25 on a birthday gift for a family member or a loved one, then that is an established boundary that you are creating within your budget. So if you're going to the mall or Target or Amazon or getting a gift card, whatever it may be, you are setting that limit at $25. That's what you can afford. That is what you're comfortable with. That is your boundary. And with that, it may be hard to say no to certain things. So for example, if your friend is having a birthday brunch, but you set, but you set the boundary of $25 is how much you can spend on a birthday, that may require you to say like, I have to sit this one out. And again, we want to communicate this with our loved ones for our own peace of mind because people do take things extra like personal and they might internalize it like, oh, she's not coming to my birthday because she doesn't value our friendship or whatever. It just makes your life easier if you can communicate with people like, hey, I'm saving for a down payment on a home or hey, I'm trying to get out of debt so I can't come to this birthday dinner. But instead, let me take you out for insert anything that's within that $25. Or hey, how about you come over and we have a movie night and I have a gift for you. There are different alternatives to spending money. It just take some creativity. Also, you don't need to show your love for people by spending money, right? Like showing up doesn't look like buying an extravagant birthday gift or whatever. Showing up is like helping someone through a, a hard time, being there emotionally. And I know that this can be hard. And this is why I'm saying that this is our boundary work with ourselves because it requires us to be open and honest and vulnerable with someone, right? Like you're essentially saying, I can't afford to do this thing. But if this person is really a friend and someone who truly loves you, then they will support you in that. And maybe that looks like you practicing what you're going to say before you say it. Like, hey girl, I wish I could celebrate your birthday dinner with you, but I'm saving up for X, Y, and Z. So I have to sit this one out, but I would love to celebrate you. Let's go for a hike. Um, I also have a gift for you, right? If that's what you want to do, or I'd also love to celebrate you. Let's go and get ice cream. This stuff doesn't come automatic to us because we have been like conditioned to like spending money shows how much you love somebody or like this is what showing up means. But this is the work that we need to do in order to protect our financial future. So don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel shame. This is the type of work that requires you to be really secure in what you're doing and your goals. Like you have to be 10 toes down in 
in what you want to do. And that's why, again, it's super crucial to set these financial goals because then you have something to be 10 toes down in and you have something to clearly communicate to your friends and your loved ones as to why you're not doing something. And we'll go more into this in the other videos that are more so geared towards communicating in your relationships. But it's also important to understand that like we communicate because it also gives us peace of mind and less drama to have to deal with things. I also highly suggest reading books on boundary setting, listening to podcasts on boundary setting. This is a forever practice that is always, always, always going to be useful, not just with your finances, but again, with your time, your energy, um, your mental capacity. We have limited resources and it is important to set up boundaries and limits to protect them and so that we can show up in the best possible way that we can. If you are a person who really does not want to budget and is like, ugh, I can't, I would suggest, right, giving yourself whatever amount that you have able to spend based off of your budget, based off of your numbers, extra. Put it on a different debit card um, or have a separate bank account. That way, the money that you have that's disposable that you can spend on anything is separated from the money that is your priority areas. So for example, if you do your budget and you realize, okay, I have an extra $200 a month that doesn't need to go towards any specific goal, I'm gonna set up a separate bank account so that this $200, I can spend on anything I want without thinking about it. And then once that $200 is gone, it's gone. I cannot use this other um, bank account because all this money has a specific task. It has a specific role. I'd also highly suggest high yield savings accounts, specifically ones that aren't super easy to get your money, right? Like online banks are really great for people who struggle with tapping into their savings accounts because it takes a little bit more time, right, to get your money. Because you can't just go down to your local bank branch and take the money out. It requires you to go online and to log in and to switch your money over. That might take two to three days. So you don't have access to that money super quickly and that could be a deterrent to you as well. Taking your credit card off your cell phone or your favorite coffee shop, right, like Starbucks, you can automatically update your Starbucks rewards by just double clicking. Take your credit card off of there because of your boundaries around how much you're spending at Starbucks, it now makes it so much harder to have access to it. Again, what we wanna do is set these boundaries but also implement things that make it easier for us to uphold these boundaries and understanding that these boundaries are here to protect you and your financial future. You wanna make sure that you are doing everything in your power to ensure your financial success. And this work isn't something that's gonna happen overnight. Again, it's gonna require you to be reflective, for you to think, for you to go back every month within your budget and to say, okay, what areas could I improve? How did I, how was I successful in keeping my boundaries? Why didn't I keep my boundaries and what can I do in the future? And again, to always come back to your why. What are your financial goals? What are you trying to do? And how do these boundaries allow you to do that? Also, just as important is I want us to celebrate our milestones. So put in milestones as you're setting these boundaries to celebrate all the success that you're doing. When it comes to finances, we typically set our milestones around numbers, right? Like, oh, I reached the halfway mark. I'm going to celebrate myself. But also celebrate the habit changes that you're seeing within yourself, within your mindset, right? Like, oh, it's I paused and hesitated on how I wanted to spend my money on eating out this month. This was something that I never did. That is worth celebrating. That's worth like having a dance party or have it, having a sip of wine or champagne or whatever that's in your within your budget to celebrate that as well. But we also want to celebrate, of course, because our finances are money like milestones. So you know, let's say we're going back to that investing goal of maxing out your Roth IRA. If I save three thousand dollars by September. I'm giving myself $100 to spend however I want, or I'm going to go to my favorite ice cream shop, or I'm going to insert something that will bring you joy and happiness and allow you to celebrate yourself. This journey is supposed to be fun. And again, these boundaries, these limits, these parameters are temporary based off of what you're going through and can change and should change as your finances change and as your goals change. But the journey itself is supposed to be fun, right? You don't want to forget about the beautiful place that you are right now because you're so focused on what's ahead of you. 
the moments that we're in right now, even though we haven't hit all of our financial goals, are still beautiful, are still wonderful, and still should be celebrated. So we wanna make sure that we are carving out time to celebrate ourselves because even taking the step of, I wanna set financial boundaries, this is what I'm gonna do, is better than where you were a month ago. And that's what we're celebrating. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, Leave them in a chat and I'll be sure to answer them. Um, in the meantime, in between times, stay blessed and stick to your budget in the best way you know how. Peace, 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 peace.